As kids, we grew up hearing the craziest myths about animals that we just blindly believed. So I spent the past week taking the most popular animal myths on the internet back to the source and achieving my childhood dream of finding out whether they're true by experimenting for myself, chatting to experts in the field and even going out to Africa to see them firsthand. So with that being said, let's start with chameleons. Originating from mainland Africa, these funky little reptiles are best known for camouflaging into their surroundings, although they've gained some controversy over the past couple years. In fact, the myth we're busting today was said in that sentence. So I'm gonna let you guess what that myth is, and in a couple seconds, I'm gonna reveal the answer. If you guess this, you're absolutely right. Even though our favorite animated films as kids told us that chameleons change color to blend into their surroundings, some people believe it's a myth. So I got in contact with my old boss at a reptile shop I used to work at to put chameleons in front of different coloured backgrounds in order to First background, and we're going to put on a blue object, which is wherever you go, there you are by John Cabot's in. It's the only blue object I've got on my house. So we've got the comedian right here. We're going to put it on the blue object right here with the blue coloured background. So he's on the blue object near enough, and he's on the blue background, but he's not changing colour. So if it's a fact and he does change colour into the colour of his backgrounds, that'll be because he wants to blend into his surroundings to hide from predators, right? So if you can imagine a population of chameleons and a predator comes by, they're going to want to hide from him so they don't get eaten. But he's not changing colour at all. So, oh, what's it got on there? Right, so let's change background. We'll do like, you know, 30 seconds sort of each. That's a bit of a longer one. But I'm going to get rid of that book now. So we've got a, a yellow, orangey background. We've got the duster, which is yellowy orange. So let's put them on there with the old backgrounds here. So if it's a complete myth and comedians don't change colour into the colour of their surroundings, then it's because they want to um, reflect their mood and state. So if you can imagine, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. So if you can imagine, you know, uh, their temperature and light will dictate their, you know, their colour as well as their emotions. So their mood, where they want to attract a mate or defend their territory or be aggressive. So those are the things. If it was a myth, which it's starting to look like it is, those would be the reasons why it will change colour. So it's starting to look like a bit of a myth. So let's change colour backgrounds into the last one, which is the forest. And for that, we have a stick, just a regular stick. And we're gonna change it here. Right, so far it's looking like a myth. They did not change colour to blend into their surroundings. So it's quite a greenish yellow colour anyway. So this is quite a hard one to tell because um, you know, it is the colour already. So he's not changing colour at all. I don't want to stress him out, so let's just call it a day there. Comedian did a great job. It's much more active than I, uh, than I thought it would have been, but it's really cool. Um, yeah, let's put it back and have a quick interview. So, from your professional opinion, did that experiment go the way you thought it would? Pretty much exactly the way I thought it would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so, chameleons obviously do change colour, but it's not to hide from predators and blend into their surroundings. Instead, it is to reflect their mood and emotion and their environmental factors in order to communicate with other chameleons. So, that myth is busted. Can we say that? It's like trying to trademark things a bit, or what? Like, is that a myth buster sort of thing? Yeah. And this is just the beginning. Later, I go to Africa to bust the most popular myth about hyenas that will blow your mind. But now let's move on to Komodo dragons. Komodo dragons are real life dragons and one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Holy smokes, that was too close. Having a built-in whip as a tail and a venomous bite that can kill you within a matter of hours. Okay, I lied, that was a complete myth. Komodo dragons aren't actually venomous as shown in multiple scientific papers. So instead of having a venomous bite, Komodo dragon saliva is actually full of toxic bacteria that just acts like venom. In fact, Steve Owen himself had an episode of Crocodile Hunter with Komodo dragons stating the exact same fact. The Komodos have bacteria in their saliva which will kill large mammals. So it must be true, right? Okay, I lied again. That's actually the myth. 
as well. See, Komodo dragons are so special because they spark so many debates across scientists whether or not they're actually venomous. But in 2009, three years after Steve Irwin's unfortunate death, Brian Fry and other researchers at the University of Queensland finally busted this myth, proving decades of scientific research right and others wrong. And I got an exclusive interview with him to answer this question. I'm going to say now because I had no idea until after the interview that the guy that I'm about to interview right now, Brian Fry, was actually Will Smith's guide through the Amazon rainforest for five weeks in his brand new TV show, Pole to Pole. So I think it's coming out mid-2024, so keep an eye out for that. And you're going to want to watch this interview. It is mad. So we're here talking about specifically the Komodo dragons and the debate whether it's toxic bacteria or venom. And you wrote a paper, I think it's 2009 it was. So what is, what is the verdict? Is it toxic bacteria or is it venom or is it both? Well, first, Samuel, let's step back to the bacteria one. So there's a very simple phrase in science that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And an animal using a bacteria as a weapon is as extraordinary of a claim as you could possibly have. But if you look, if you step back, it all comes down to a 1980 book put out by a guy, guy named Offenberg. About 20% of the way through the book, he describes seeing you know, a water buffalo with an infection. And then that's the last you hear about it until near the end of the book, where out of nowhere comes this enchanting theory about bacteria being used as a weapon, but absolutely no evidence to support it. Now, any carnivore is going to have bacteria in their mouth. That's a given. So, you know, any study that looked at wild Komodos and said, hey, look, we found bacteria. Well, of course you did. You know, look in the mouth of your average five-year-old kid chewing on their classmate's ankle, and they're going to have a lot of bacteria too. So we looked at the bacteria in the mouth of a Komodo, and Komodos actually have a very low bacteria load relative to that of other carnivores, much lower than the bacteria load you find in a lion or a Tassie devil. Mammalian carnivores have much dirtier mouths. If you look at a Komodo after it feeds, it'll spend 10, 15 minutes leaf lick, uh, lick, licking its lips and rubbing its head up and down in the leaves. It really cleans itself up. And that's a lot less of the gore that you, you know, associate with your mammalian predators. So there's no evidence that Komodos you know, harbor bacteria, let alone use it. But the irony is with Offenberg himself is that in his own notes, they had the first evidence for venom and they didn't realize it because he describes the goats as being unusually quiet as if they were sedated, despite like literally a couple meters of guts hanging out. Um, so they were acting like they were drugged. He said they bled longer and more profusely than he would have expected from the size of the cuts. Their teeth are like razors. One bite, one laceration, and I bleed out and be dead in an instant. And that they seem to be dizzy and rapidly lose consciousness. What they found is consistent with what we've actually found in the venom, where we found um, we found the first neurotoxins we published last year that hit some of the um, ion channels. We found a number of different anticoagulants. We found toxins that open up the aorta, so the blood pressure just plummets. So all of the things, the kind of effects he described, we've actually found toxins for. So Komodo dragons are actually venomous, busting the myth and settling the heated debate that's been separating scientists for decades. Now onto a more local animal, bees. Being responsible for a third of the food humans eat, bees are most likely to have originated from Asia, but are now seen absolutely everywhere, from your back garden and even this forest, or anywhere there's plants and flowers really. So this next myth is actually quite personal to me, and maybe it is to you too, because whenever I was a kid and I picked up a dead bee, I know I was a strange kid, my mum would always come up to me and say, whoa, be careful, it can still sting you. And every time I put that bee down without ever finding out the hard way, I mean, after all, it is just a myth, right? Well, now I'm an unsupervised adult, <laughs> I'm here to find out the hard way. So with me is a dead wasp. I couldn't find a dead bee, they're quite hard to come by in November. So I'm gonna count down from three. And when I do, I'm gonna touch its stinger. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, I'm not Coyote Peterson from Brave Wilderness. I'm not gonna get stung for your entertainment. Ah! Ah! 
Also, if your mum tells you to put something down, like listen to her, I'm sure some of you found out the hard way. Also, don't forget, it's dead for a reason. You don't want to inject all of its nasty germs from its stinger into your body. So yes, wasps and bees can still sting you when they're dead, but don't voluntarily let a bee or wasp sting you. It's weird. So onto the final and most controversial myth we'll be busting today with hyenas. Hyenas consist of four species, with the brown hyena being the rarest and by far coolest, all of which originated from Eurasia but are now seen all over the world. Which is great news for some, but absolutely horrific news for others. See, I'm sure you can relate. Growing up on films like The Lion King was really good, but they don't exactly give hyenas a good rep, especially as they try to kill Simba and Nala. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Like you? Oops. <laughs> So I'm getting to the bottom of this traumatic experience by finding out whether or not hyenas are actually evil and why. So researching into this myth shows us that hyenas have had a bad rep way before Lion King, with written cases of them killing livestock, digging up corpses, attacking children, you know, things you'd prefer not to happen. Although, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Do you remember what allegedly caused the pandemic a couple years ago? If you said pangolins or bats, you'd be absolutely correct. And that's because of diseases that can transfer from animals to humans called zoonotic diseases. And this is why hyenas are so important. Because of their role in the ecosystem, essentially eating rotting corpses, they're able to intervene and stop the spread of these diseases from animals to animals or even animals to humans. So hyenas could have stopped multiple pandemics years ago that we had no idea about, and maybe they can do it in the future. So essentially, hyenas are not evil, they're just doing their job. But that's not all. You might be wondering, George, how do you know about all this information and why are you so confident about it? Well, funny enough, I'm actually a brown hyena researcher at a conservation organisation called Vetpore. And for the next year, I'm going to be in Africa monitoring and protecting brown hyenas. And although some of you don't like hyenas, protecting them indirectly means protecting rhinos and elephants and all other animals that you love. So if you want a Busting Wildlife Myths Part 2 Africa edition, let me know by hitting the subscribe button below the video. Thanks for watching.